freshman class wise, these guys, we've had Troy Williams has been out since last week. Luke Fisher, Luke Fisher's been out since the end of last week. We miss them. All of a sudden, I've noticed every day we don't have Troy Williams' energy in there. And that's, that's rare when you miss a freshman like that. Troy Williams has got a rare level of energy. He's got an athleticism that's going to just blow your mind. You won't get to see it on, on Friday night, unfortunately. He, he came in today, he wanted to have a meeting. And, and uh, okay, well, is everything good? Everything's good academically. He's doing a great job in this. His attitude's been great in practice. I'm pushing him to push his teammates. He just wanted to know if he could be a judge in the dunk contest. You know, that to me, that's a great kid. He won't be a judge next year. I mean, we won't need one when he's jumping up there. I mean, his, his level of athleticism is, is, is outstanding. But for him, it's going to be that consistency. Can he get down and really guard people? Can he take good shots? Can he keep delivering the basketball? Can he keep putting on that strength that's so important because he's going to have some huge matchups in this league, and, and he just keeps building his game. And that's what we're going to need from him. Luke Fisher is just a pure winner. I mean, just a pure winner. 84-2, I believe it was, in his high school years. He is what we call a year-round winner. And to me, those are the things that, that separate him because he's played in a lot of big games at the high school level. He knows what it takes. He knows how to score. He's not afraid. He comes in there. He battles. He got hurt going for a rebound, freak accident. Uh, he, you know, he'll miss a few more weeks. But there's a guy, he can go over both shoulders, he can go with both hands, he's developing his jump shot, he can rebound, he's smart, he's got toughness, and we're going to need him. We're going to need him. There's not going to be any, well, let's compare him to Cody Zeller type things. There's certain things that Cody did that we want him to do. There's also some things that he does that it took a while for Cody to get. So we're not going to do any of the comparison part. We're just going to really let Luke Fisher be the best Luke Fisher that he can be as a freshman and keep helping him build towards where he can be. Noah Vonley has got a rare work ethic. And I don't mean a rare work ethic for somebody that's been 18 for a month. I mean a rare work ethic. It's rare. He, 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 he's just scratching the surface as a player. He's just scratching the surface as a student. He's just scratching the surface as a leader. And this kid, he's got some natural leadership in him that, that is only going to continue to grow and take off. And, and, he's, and when he learns to be as demanding on others as he is of himself, look out. I mean, it is hard to believe that this young guy has only been 18 for a month and, and uh, loves to be in that gym. He epitomizes right now where we stand as a 365-day-a-year type guy. He's getting his game stretched much like Cody did when he got here. You know, there's a lot, there's a lot more discomfort and uncomfort for Noah right now than there is comfort, and that's the way it's supposed to be. You know, Cody didn't come in driving the ball like that. Cody didn't come in scoring over his left hand. He was extremely well coached than high school Cody was, just like Noah was. But our job was to stretch his game. Our job was to stretch his game. A great example, Cody Zeller. He not only didn't make a three or take a three in the games, he only took a couple. He didn't make one in practice when we scrimmaged. But yet every time we did a three-point shooting drill, every time we did a five-minute threes type of drill, every time we did something where the guards were shooting the ball, where he was shooting it too, we would do this five-minute threes drill, and he would average between 47 and 51 threes inside of those five minutes. But yet he wasn't comfortable in taking them in the games. No big deal. He will now. It's all part of the process. And our job at Indiana and what we're trying to get across is you may not see all the things that they're going to be capable of doing when the games come, but they will be working on it. And that's kind of where we're at with Noah right now. We're stretching his game. We run him with the perimeters and guards some days. We run him with the big guys other days. We're just letting him play. We're just letting him play because, because when he starts to get a comfort level and the confidence catches up with his game, because he's not one of those kids, he knows. That's the one thing I like about a bunch of our freshmen right now. They know what they don't know. They know that they don't know. All right, it's not, well, you know, I got all this and I got all that. Sometimes when you have a highly ranked class like we've had, and sometimes when you're coming in and you're replacing the great players that we're, that we're trying to replace, guys come in and they think, well, they got the answers. I went through this at Marquette in 2003 04. And our freshman class was not up to the snuff of what, and it was my fault. I mean, I just made mistakes. But we had too many guys that thought they were going to come in and be Dwayne Wade. There is only one Dwayne Wade. There is only one. And, and the bottom line is you've got to have people that come in there that they know that they don't know. They just want to get it. 
And that's what Noah is like right now. He's building his ball handling. He's building his ability to go left, though that's going to take a little bit of time. He's developing his jump shot. He is a rebounding machine. We had a situation yesterday. We scrimmaged for 25 minutes. He had 15 rebounds. Those are the kind of things to me that are going to help us win. There's no doubt about it. Stanford Robinson is a very unique, unorthodox type of player because he can do a lot of different things. He can handle the ball. He is as good a downhill player as we have right now outside of Yogi when it comes to playing the game, going straight line, straight downhill. Now, we're trying to help him get his fundamentals. We're trying to help him get both hands where they need to be. We're trying to help him get his jump shot as consistent it needs to, as it needs to be. Understand the techniques and all those things defensively. You're not going to see any defensive juggernaut when you see us play Friday night. And you may not see it for a while. But let me tell you, it'll be there. And guys like Stan Robinson will help make that happen because they win. They compete. He doesn't have a ton of confidence yet about where it needs to be, but he's trying to learn. And, 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 and we're, not, we're not trying to make it a real intricate, detailed system right now in the sense of let's do a lot of volume. Okay, We're not trying to do that. We're trying to get the nuts and bolts of this thing down right now. We're trying to get the nuts and bolts of our defense and our footwork and our technique and our spacing and our rebounding and our transition defense and all those types of things. So Stan's right in the midst of that like everybody else, trying to get that where it needs to be. Two local guys, Devin Davis and Colin Hartman. Devin is probably, in my mind, uh, been the most surprising of anybody from the summer to this point because because he has got uh, an energy around that basket. He has got a willingness to rebound. He's got a toughness level that he doesn't even know he has yet. And he's, he, he, he sometimes fights the conditioning part of it. Sometimes he fights the fatigue part of it. He gets totally offended when I bring that up. I've already found you know, that thing that, that, that drives him a little bit. But that kid gets to the basket. He gets to the basket, and, and he can make things happen around that basket. He can finish, and he's got a chance to get on that court right now because of his rebounding and because of his defense. And, and that's one of the things that's so important. It doesn't matter where you're ranked. It doesn't matter who recruited you. When you get to a college program, just like it is with the NBA, there's a couple of things, okay, they're going to keep you on that floor. And defense and rebounding are usually, and for guards a lot of times, it's not turning the ball over. Those are the things that are going to really make a difference for you as a player. And that's what Devin's bringing us. Colin Hartman, we need to make shots. We need him to be a ball mover, a body mover, a guy that can space and knock down shots. He's still getting his body. He's getting stronger. He's trying to get to the endurance level that he has to have. At this point right now, we're trying to fix certain things in his jump shot so that he's down low, so that he's not arching his back. All these, I don't want to get into all the technical jargon, but those are the kind of things when that consistency comes from him, then he'll help us. He'll be able to make shots because he's a willing shooter. He's a very good passer. He, 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 he went at it today in a couple of our rebounding drills that I was a little bit surprised at. Not that I didn't think he could do it, but I wasn't sure he's ready for it at this point. And all those things, you know, for him right now are crucial in, 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 in taking the next step. We've got a couple of other young guys in the freshman class, Joe Fagan from Bishop Chittard, Andrew Calamaris from Maryland that are learning their way and learning how important it is to bring what got them there, you know, which is hustle, determination, desire, work ethic, all those kind of things. Then there's Johnny Marlin, who transferred from IPFW, who's from Center Grove. And Johnny is somebody that, that, that uh, he's just got to continue to understand what we demand of the point guards and what we demand of the guards in our program. Communication is huge. Confidence is huge. All right, the confidence doesn't come from the coaches. The confidence comes from your willingness to go above and beyond, communicate, step out there, make some mistakes. Then all of a sudden you feel that confidence from the coaches. And Johnny's somebody that I think he's getting stronger. He's one of the strongest guys on our team, believe it or not. And, 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 and he doesn't look at but when that kid starts throwing up the 185 bench press, pretty, pretty amazing how good he is with it. We need him to play that way on the court. We don't need him to, to take a back seat to leadership. We don't need him to take a back seat to communication. We need him to bring those type of things. I've mentioned a lot of guys. We have a lot of guys. And, and I think this is the kind of team, like I said, the depth could be important in this team. Because I don't think we're going to have that one conventional way. I'm not sure we're a team that's just going to come down and outshoot you this year. I'm not sure we're a team that is going to uh, be a tremendous leader in turnovers. I'm not sure on that. It's way too early to tell. And if I can't tell, well, then nobody else can tell. Because I not only watch it and coach it, but then I watch the films. And I've recruited most of those guys, okay, and for, for a long time, some longer than others. The point is this. I'm not going to have any patience with it.
Okay? The one thing you don't ever want to have when you're trying to develop leadership and when you're trying to develop a team and develop that chemistry, the coach can't have patience with that. All right? I don't feel like I'm not big on patience and I'm not big on perspective. I'm really not. Because if I was big on patience and big on perspective, well, I sure would have felt a lot better those first three years here. I sure would have had a lot more better night's sleep. I sure would have had less stomach problems. I sure would have had less anguish. I, I would have had a happier staff. None of us were here to be patient and to keep it in perspective. None of us. And we're not going to start now. But everybody else, we're going to need that. This group is young. This group's got some fireballs. It's got some high energy. It's got some athleticism. It's got some skill, some length. It's got some older guys coming back that, that, that have a chance to be really good. It's got Yogi Ferrell, who could be tremendously special as one of the better point guards in the country. It's got Hunter Perea and Jeremy Hollowell, who show those flashes, just don't have that consistency yet. It's going to take time. It's going to take time. How much time? I don't know. It's not a plea for patience. It's reality. It's reality. And, and Pat Riley said a long time ago, okay, that a coach's responsibility is to define reality for their team. And, and to me, that's, that's, I don't know what that reality is yet. All I know is that we're going to work as hard as we can on a daily basis to make it better. And, and along the way, and one thing I wanted to share tonight before I turn it over to questions, is I wanted to share a couple things that have helped me over these five years with keeping things in mind. Defining reality is one of those things. Bill Parcell said that a leader is going to deal with up to five things on average a day that he or she did not see coming. And I'm paraphrasing a bit here. But there'll be five things that come up that were unexpected in that day. And how that leader responds to those five things is the definition of their leadership. And as you go down the line, think about your parents, think about your bosses, think about your grandparents. They know exactly what I'm talking about. You'll know too. You'll know too. How you respond to change, how you respond to adversity. There was a study done that the average attention span of a teenager is eight seconds. There was another a study done, serious, there was another study done that distractions for the average human being right now, when we are interrupted in our work, it takes us 23 minutes to get back to being locked in and focused like we were before the interruption. The statistics aren't with us. We've got to keep working constantly. You've got to deal with change. You don't get to have pick and choose ownership. You don't get to flip things around and say, we well, you know I'll worry about this today and not worry about that tomorrow. Not when you're a leader. You gotta be, you gotta be, you gotta dive into every bit of it. Into every bit of it. Tony LaRusso said, you have to have a strategy for everything. He said, you have to fill the voids that are in our players' lives because if you don't fill them, all right, someone else will, and you have no control over it. You think about that, okay? As we get to be older, as you get to be older, and you get to that point someday where you have children, or you're responsible for your family, so you're, you're a teacher, or you're working with young people when you get a little bit older. You have to fill voids constantly. You can't just leave it to chance. And those are the kind of things, those kind of things come back to me. And that's why I wrote them down, because I wanted to share them, because, you know, obviously this would be the last time some of us ever really spent any time like this, depending on what our ages are and things and where we're at in school. And those are things that have helped me along the way. Somebody else that really helped me, in the movie We Were Soldiers once, by, on General Hal Moore, Mel Gibson played him. This is a guy that I got a chance to, to, to meet, a chance to listen to, and then a chance to be friends with, back in the early 2000s, back when I was in Milwaukee. And he's one of the most decorated war heroes of all time. I mean, of all time. And if you, and, and, and if you ever want to take a couple of hours and, 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 and give yourself an incredible history lesson and be inspired when you're done, go rent We Were Soldiers or however we do it these days, Netflix or whatever we do. Okay, find that. But he had some great lines. And, and, and I use these now because I've been sharing these with people that, that I'm close to, people that in, in my family or people in coaching. Because they're, they're timeless, man. I mean, they're timeless. They matter. And these are all things that, that over the last couple of years have been phenomenal, I think, in, in, in helping me and helping our staff. Right, one is always trust your instincts. Always trust your instincts. Because, and in, 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 in it's another part of that, instincts are an informed feel. It's not just what we think. It's not just what our opinion is. You know, Daniel Patrick Moynihan said a long time ago, we're all entitled to our own opinion but we're not entitled to our own facts. And sometimes with our instincts, we gotta make sure that the facts are sitting there, that we've studied it, that we understand it, and then we just gotta trust what we think. Because, we, we, because we're informed, because we've paid attention to it. 
and, and trusting instincts is a really, really big thing. Okay? Could be a lineup decision, could be a play we're going to call, could be a decision we make in our life. Trust your instincts. Here's a great one. Three strikes and you're not out. This is from General Moore. Three strikes and you're not out. There is always one more thing you can do to influence the outcome, okay, in your favor. And another. And another. And another. By all the times that we've been in situations where we've struggled or where it didn't look like we were going to win a game and you change a defense or you call a timeout later, you try to find a way to get something done. That's that coming back for me. There's never a time that you're out of it. There's never a time that you don't have a chance to make something better. There's never a, another defense we can't go to. There's never a different way we can't study. There's always something that we can do. Always. Always. To try to figure out to put it in our favor. And we may not get it. You know what? That we might. We might. Here's one that somebody close to me used the other night. He said, when you are in the middle of a battle, when you are in the middle of a fight, Sometimes you have to mentally detach yourself from the battle. And you have, to be at, you have to ask yourself, am I doing something that I should not be doing? Or is there something that I'm not doing that I should be doing? You have to detach yourself from it. And it doesn't mean you get to go sit and take a break. It doesn't mean you get to go take a time out. It doesn't mean you get to go sit in the corner and take a day off from work. No, no. You've got to think about it in real time. You've got to think about it like right now. Is there something different, all right, that could, that could affect this? Am I giving my team, am I giving my family, am I giving my unit every chance to be successful right now? Am I, am, have I thought of everything? And that's where having a great staff comes in. That's where having people that you trust and people that, 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 that mentor you and really listening to them and really relying on them and taking that, that, that wisdom and, and taking something from it and applying it. And those are big from him. And then the last one is this, and we're all faced with this, and I'm not sure there's one thing that's helped me more in my time at Indiana than this. And I saw it in a church service on television years ago. And lo and behold, it's crazy, there was a rerun of this service about a month and a half ago. And I took the same notes in it that I took when I, when I saw the first service in 2006. And it doesn't have anything to do with, with, with denomination or anything of that. But it was a minister, Pastor Reverend Charles Stanley, Dr. Charles Stanley. And he said, the disappointment is inevitable, but discouragement is a choice. Disappointment in life is inevitable. It's going to happen. You cannot stop it. You cannot control it. But discouragement is something we do to ourselves. Discouragement is something that we allow to have happen. And I'm going to close with this before we turn it over, okay, to some question and answers and go out, outside and get some things. I never want anybody coming and talking to my team that tells them about how great they are, tells them about uh, how wonderful they are, and boy, aren't you lucky to be playing at Indiana, and boy, you guys are this and you guys are that. I never want that. I want people that are going to tell them the truth. I want people that aren't afraid to go above and beyond and, and, and give them something. Well, this weekend, we had our fantasy camp, and it, it was a lot of fun. It was way better than what I thought it would have been. It was supposed to be 35 and over. And they pay us some of money to come in and they get the interaction. They get to live like an Indiana basketball player for a couple of days. Now, one of the great highlights is Mark Cuban came back for it. And I'd never met Mark Cuban before Friday. And he was, he was just, I've got a snapshot now of what ultra successful looks like and the humbleness that comes with it when you, the way you treat people and the way that you compete. This guy, who is one of the great uh, representatives of this university, it didn't matter who you were. It didn't matter if you were a manager. It didn't matter if you were a family. It didn't matter if you were a little kid. It didn't matter if you were another millionaire. He had time for you. He had time for you. There are people that went out with him to Nick's. Okay, now that's probably another story in itself. But they went out to Nick's. <laughs> and they're in there. And they watched Shark Tank with Mark Cuban. Can you think about that? Can you imagine that? They're watching Shark Tank with him. I mean, and, and, and here's a guy. That guy gets on that show just turns to gold. This guy is brilliant. And I got a couple of minutes with him before he left on Saturday night that, that were just, just took, I just saw somebody with knowledge at another level. But there were a lot of people that were really successful there. A lot of people. And there was one man that was there, and he owns a company, 
and, and a very successful company, and they travel around and they go play in these camps, like Kansas has one, like we have, Kentucky has one, Duke has one, Syracuse has one, the only one I've worked, Dwayne Wade has one in Miami, and I've worked that a couple of years, I enjoy it, I love it. USA Basketball had one in Vegas, where they go and they travel to these and they play. And, and, and this guy now, this is a guy, he, he's got a lot of money. I mean, a lot of money. It, it's, it's eight digits. It's not seven. And, 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 and the old play and the thing like that. Well, he didn't shoot very well from the foul line on, on Friday, evidently, in our first game. And we told these guys, Cook Hall, Assembly Hall, it's open to you, just like our players, 24-7. This guy called ahead, got a manager to meet in there at 7.15 on Saturday morning. Okay, 7.15, we weren't starting camp till 9. All right, the next morning, we're in the championship rounds, the playoff rounds, he goes in there at 7. All right, his first game is not until 10 o'clock. Went in there at 7 o'clock that morning. Now, this guy's probably earned the right and earned the ability to sleep in a couple times. This guy's probably earned the right and earned the ability to just kind of mail it in. He can do what he wants. Well, he told me a story. I knew about this. Anybody remember when, uh, uh, when, the, when the plane went down with Captain Schellenberger in the Hudson a couple years ago in New York? Anybody remember that? Well, this guy I'm talking about was on that plane. And long story short, he was one of the guys up in the front that had to help people get off. He had to help people get off that plane. And, and what's amazing is when, when he got everybody off, he went to the wing. He sat on the wing and called ahead because he was going to get home to coach his son's team that next morning. He was going to coach his team. So he's on the wing. I knew about this part. But calling ahead, set up a flight to get out of another airport in New York because he's getting home that night. So that's amazing in itself. But he told the story about how he and another man, another stranger, had to help people get off that plane. Oh, they had to help him. And there was a lady that was elderly, and she wasn't in great health. And, 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 and he had to help her get off. And she was one of the last ones off. She was in the back of the plane. And, and he almost wasn't able to help her. He almost wasn't able to, to get her off. Okay? He almost slipped, which means she would have fallen. She probably wasn't coming out of that water at the age of 80 years of age. And he said, that was my time. That was my moment that says, I'm making changes. We all go through them. I go through them. I've gone through them since I've been here. All right, constantly. If you're not changing, you're not getting better. I could tell you stories about a guy at another one of those camps that I first met him when he was 68. He's now 70. He is a far better athlete at 70 than he was at 68. Now, he looks every bit of 70. Every bit of it, okay, for whatever that looks like. But the guy every day plays ping pong. He couldn't find, he, he, had, he lives in Oklahoma City. He had people in his business, okay, they would play against. He didn't feel they were competing against him enough. He hired graduate assistants, people your age, to come in and try to beat his brains in in ping pong. Okay, and I'm watching him. He works out, he shoots baskets, all these kind of things. I'm watching him in this camp, watching all this hand-eye coordination. All right, and it's like, whoa, I mean, we're, I'm, I'm into deflections. Come on, we're really into that. And, and look, at, it's like, where does this come from? He says, more ping pong, more ping pong. You're never too old to get better. But it goes back to this man. Now, I don't know what drives him. You get a big time company like that, you're probably going to be in a situation where you've probably worked with some people to get to that point. You probably aspire. But when you figure out what your passion is and you figure out that we're given an opportunity to make people's lives better and you figure out that it is absolutely paramount that we get the most out of a day, I'm telling you, you're heading to success. You may not own your own company, okay? You may not have that. Who knows? Who knows if you will? Who knows if you won't? That when you understand that we are in a position in life where we control our discouragement, we control our excitement, we control our enthusiasm, we control our passion because we want something and we want to be successful and we want to see others get theirs, we're not going to waste days. You're not going to waste days. You're not going to sleep in past that 9.15 class. You're not going to blow off that Friday. You're not going to not be prepared for that test. You're not going to be ready, not ready for that job interview. You're going to be not ready. When you get into that situation, you will be ready.
when there are four or five hundred other people competing for the same thing that you want. You will be ready for that because you will have helped other people get what they want. And when you invest in others, just like I want our team to learn now, when you invest in others getting what they need, what they want, it comes back to you more than you can ever imagine. You are at Indiana University. Our players are at Indiana University. It's not supposed to be easy. It's your job to make it better. Make it better for everybody around you. Make it better for yourself. Make it a better world. Thanks for having me. Thank you.